So I believe we may be live. Uh, so hi, Umberto. Thank you very much for being with us today. Hi, Asia. Thank you very much for having me. So uh, this is the third day. So today with Umberto, we will be talking about social media and digital activism. Uh, so Umberto was on our podcast actually before, so you can find also his uh, previous interview he did with us on YouTube. Uh, this is a full week of events for the Italian Ministry of the Environment's Initiative uh, Agenda, all for climate. And plus, it's, we wanted this week to talk about communicating sustainability in different fields. That's why Umberto is here today. We had Ricardo Parigi on Monday and yesterday Matteos as well on circular economy. So uh, if you have questions, by the way, to our listeners, you can add them in the comments. I'll be picking them up in the last 10 minutes of this one hour long that Umberto is with us. And uh, let's talk about Umberto. So Umberto, you are a motivated communication specialist. You have over 10 years of experience in traditional and innovative uh, online platforms, effective content creation, audience engagement techniques. You are a climate reality leader. You are my mentor for the climate reality leader. So that's, that's the pleasure we had to actually to meet you. Uh, you are on our podcast. And yes, Umberto, tell us a little bit about your work and the presentation that you have for us today. Yes, you basically stole my opening. Uh, you <laughs> said it all. <laughs> yes. Hi, uh, I'm Umberto Bozzolini. I'm a climate reality leader, so a volunteer member of the Climate Reality Project founded by uh, former US Vice President uh, Al Gore about climate change and uh, its solution. And for uh, the last, yes, maybe around 10 years, I paid basically my bills with uh, digital marketing, <laughs> uh, lately mostly with um, social media marketing. Uh, so tonight I'd like to have a conversation about uh, digital activism. I'm just sharing my screen, if I manage, but I think so. Okay. Wow. Can you see it? Yes, perfect. Yes, I can. So um, I'd like to start with a question. Uh, first of all, um, what's activism? What's, I mean, real activism? Uh, is uh, this real activism or uh, maybe this or this? What it's all about? Is it about the effort, the, the, the kind of uh, action you perform? What? Because I'm asking this because uh, usually when it comes to um, digital activism, is something perceived as opposed to uh, real activism? So we like to complicate what's simple. So in the beginning, it was activism, then digital activism. And today we have uh, click activism, uh, hacktivism, uh, hashtag activism, and my favorite, slacktivism. So this is a, a word cloud. Uh, as you can see, there's internet, online, petition, blog. Um, so what, what's slacktivism? Um, basically, it's a portmanteau of two English words. Slacker and activism. Not being English, my first language, uh, I checked on the dictionary what uh, slacker means. And basically, um, this is a slacker. <laughs> so I started to think hmm, <laughs> there's something wrong here. And uh, this is uh, a definition of uh, slacktivism. And you see, it's an uh, uh, urban dictionary, so probably supposed to be uh ironic anyway for some reason uh when it comes to uh activism and social media so online activism um the, the general idea the general perception is quite um you know negative and the problem is uh very often a lot of criticism uh is coming from activists themselves uh, this is uh, Michael White, co-founder of the uh, Occupy Wall Street movement. Uh, I'm not reading the whole uh, quote, it's a pretty long quote, but just uh, the last part, clicktivism is to activism as McDonald's is to, um, uh, to, to um, sorry, my screen went crazy, <laughs> is to a slow cooked meal. It may look like food, but the life-giving nutrients are long gone. Um, pretty tough, and I wondered, okay, uh, where is this coming from? Uh, I started to think about what's digital activism. 
Uh, I'll give you a few examples. Uh, digital strikes. Uh, this is a typical example. Uh, this is me <laughs> around one year ago. Uh, maybe I'm too old for Fridays for Future, but we share uh, <laughs> the same goals, so I'm a supporter. Uh, this was the first ever uh, Fridays for Future um, digital strike. It was the beginning of the first uh, global lockdown, so everybody had to run for cover and get creative. Uh, we were instructed to um, basically share these three hashtags and take a picture of ourselves uh, sharing uh, the hashtags and sh uh, share it through social media, our social media channels. Then I liked it very much. See how we can get creative when <laughs> things <laughs> get hard. Uh, we had to put an avatar of ourselves in front of, uh, with the geotagging uh, platform in front of Palazzo Chigi which is uh, Italian government headquarter. And my question now is, in terms of uh, message, in terms of involvement, in terms of outcome, what's the real difference between a real strike and a, a digital one? And then again, donation. Uh, another very common example of slacktivism. Um, you can decide to uh, donate some money for any cause you, you believe in. You can do it offline, you can do it online. And through social media, this is for my birthday two years ago, yeah. Uh, well, it's in Italian, but basically through Facebook, for, for instance, in this case, you can um, donate or you can share your own fundraising. You just have to choose your cause, set a goal, uh, an amount, and then share it, and that's it. Anybody can donate for, for, for your cause. Uh, yeah, maybe it's pretty easy, but I don't really see how it's something negative, you know? Or you can do it through a specific platform as uh, GoFundMe, for, for example. I, I, I found it great, you know? <laughs> yeah, again. Maybe things get easier for people, but it's, it's not always as mm, easy equals su uh, superficial. I, I don't think it's always like that. Maybe sometimes it's just, you know, um, something people think. If something is harder, it's better, but maybe not, not always. We can, we, 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 we have to make the effort to see the, 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 the bright side in everything. Um, petitions. Petition was the biggest word in our uh, Slack to be as well, words cloud. Um, again, uh, online petitions. Um, we have an event with the Climate Reality Project uh, called 24 Hours of Reality. Every year, uh, thousands of uh, volunteers uh, can deliver a, um, a presentation about climate change and its solution all around the world in the same 24 hours. It's a huge event, usually offline. Then again, last year we had to do it online. And the European branch decided to link a petition to, to the event this one, bailouts, yes, for people and the planet, basically demanding the um, European establishment of the biggest green investment ever. Um, as you can see, we, we were reaching the uh, 450,000 signatures, and we did, um, in a very short time. And I think that's amazing. And incredible and uh, yeah maybe again <laughs> pretty easy but um, again i don't see the real difference between signing or, or launching a petition offline or online yes i see a difference it's it's a huge outcome so um, again maybe something good can happen with social activism uh yes and then the first thing after signing it share it through social media. So uh, this is change.org, uh, another uh, platform in this case to share um, petitions, not 
fundraising. Uh, why do you usually decide to sign a petition um, to get to decision makers, I guess? Uh, so let's see what uh, decision makers are doing on social media. Uh, this is a research I personally made uh, during the last um, election day in the United States. Uh, when it comes to um, political and social advertising, a lot of uh, data is uh, of public domain. So I took a look what these two were doing. And I'm not going to deep, dig too deep into the data right now, but as you can see, uh, there is the um, amount of money, number of impressions and the demographics and where um, ads were shown and so on. This is Joe Biden, this is Donald Trump. Uh, I'd like to focus on the amount of money spent because like it or not, usually decision makers put money where they think they can get results. And this is a huge amount of money. And I don't know what part social media uh, played in the game, but four years ago with this outcome and in November with this other one. So um, one last thought. Online, anything happens very fast, five times faster, as research shown, uh, than offline. Um, in less than three years, we went from this, create a first strike, to this, 200 national prizes for future social media channels with over 20 million followers. This is not something you achieve this fast and this effectively offline. So social media played a very big role also, it, it may be in bad things, but maybe also in fantastic things. So there's always the other side of the coin, you know? And so maybe slacktivists or digital activists, I don't like labels, are not that bad because they are, for instance, two times as likely to volunteer, two times as likely to ask for donation, and 59% of people say that the internet has had a major impact on the ability to get individuals together to make social change. I prefer to agree with uh, Professor Mirzev of New York University. If it's just on social media, then very little will follow from that. But if by seeing things, people are impelled to take action themselves and they are helped to find out how to take that action themselves, then change can result. People, I think it's the, the, the key word here. Social media is just another tool, another technology. But um, what I think it's important here is we are just people sharing a common goal offline and online, whatever, and trying to do something about that. So we can take action. How we can take action also online. Um, I have just a little request and in the next few days please go online and use reactions and sign a petition make a donation because in the end it counts everything counts so please make it count thank you uh, thank you umberto i think it was very nice that you added a call to action at the end it is uh necessary again that's a lot of the what uh, we're doing online considering how things are changing the pandemic uh, forced us a lot to be on social media so it, it has played a role this year more than ever as you know stronger than ever more this year because of the pandemic so um there are, i have many questions and uh many of them also come from the interview you already gave us so but maybe we can start with the first one how can you tell if a form of activism is successful how would you consider that as a measurement general, general just general treatment. so if, I, if i'm oh, well when it comes to social media of course so if, if you're seeing uh you're acting online as a and you you define yourself as an activist how would you measure your success in doing it on social media well first of all um i wouldn't separate what you're doing uh, offline and what you're doing um, online, or at least don't use it, um, I don't know, as an excuse, because 
Yes, it's true when it comes to the online realm, everything gets faster and easier and maybe you can feel, you know, good with yourself. Okay, I'm an activist because I'm signing a lot of petition and liking everything. But that's an attitude you can have offline as well. Uh, I mean, uh, your, it's, it's, it's something you have with yourself, how, how and how much you are involved, involved in, in something. So um, I think the, the, the real question, uh, everybody should to be honest with himself and think, what am I doing? What, what, um, am I doing enough? I'm, am I satisfied? in how I am being active or, or, or not, because, you know, you can donation petitions, something, it, you sign a petition offline and you feel comfortable with yourself, it's the same thing, or, um, you know, you just participate in, in real strikes, you know, just because, so you don't go to school, or I don't know, it's, I think it's quite the same. So, um, first of all, be true to yourself, be honest with yourself. And that's the, the starting point. Um, then when it comes to social media, how you can measure if it's effective. Uh, I think maybe you're entering in the um, communi communication realm. Uh, so you have to start question about your uh, communication strategy. But again, it's not, I, I, it's, it doesn't have to be something separated from, from the rest. I think it should be a tool for something bigger. So and what, what advice would you give uh, activists who would like to uh, go online and do more activism on social media? Because petitions sometimes feel a little, a little too easy. So yes, petitions are useful because they share an information. So they inform as well. Not only you're taking part, but you're telling that there's an issue and you're saying we should inform policymakers, for instance. However, I always, I always imagine that once I sign a petition, I close a tab and it makes me feel a little, okay, what now? <laughs> so what advice would you give to activists who want to go on social media and make it count? Um, first of all, an ocean is made of, you know, little drops. So maybe you don't see it in the moment, but as I said before, everything counts because you, you have to consider the whole picture. Then you're not alone. So this is maybe something we can discuss about today's communication and social media, especially. We feel we, we, we are very alone. We were, there's a lot of an individualism. Maybe you have to remember you're not. And there's a lot happening uh, online with their organization, with who came before you, and you can just join the, the, the conversation, join what's happening. You don't have to do it all alone, you know. Uh, and again, if you are, uh, I think the, 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 the problem you're going to, to have are the same or similar um, offline and, uh, and online. So um, maybe my advice is to be open, uh, to, to, to study the, 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 the place where we are, so, so to, to know something about them. So, um, social media and the possibility they, they, they can offer, uh, then to not consider them something as separated from you know, reality, but a part of it, and then choose, choose your, uh, you know, your way, because in the end, we are all different, and everybody, anybody feels comfortable with something different than anybody else, you know, so. Yeah, so when you mention conversation, it comes to mind uh, an American expert I once met. Um, he was an expert in innovation technology. I don't recall his name now, but I remember that he was the person in his book to mention that every 1,000 or like 100,000 comments, something of that, Hitler is mentioned. 
on social media. So, and that I guess that the underlying uh, reasoning behind this theory is that conversations online can get very angst. They can get very uh, confusing. So also, how would you approach such conversation online? So you're trying to find people who are within your community, do believe in your same values, but it's not always easy. So what can you tell us about that? Yeah, this is another um, hot topic uh, when it comes to uh, social media, but um, you know the online world in general. Something that happened, we lost what we're called uh, gatekeepers. So there's no filter uh, and anybody can access uh, the, I mean, the means of production. You, you, you can share anything you want. You are on the same level. Um, people have to be their own gatekeepers. And it's not always easy, especially today where we are overflowed with uh, information more than our brain is capable of processing. This is some research I, I, I read. Uh, we are not able to, to process all the information we are exposed to. Mm -hmm. that. Uh, so maybe some, uh, this is something a bit more difficult because to be your own gatekeeper, how can I do it? Uh, and again, uh, to be open to different perspectives, uh, to study again, to, to learn, um, maybe to uh, choose your sources, to recognize where something is wrong, where it's, if you, um, you know, study the topic, it, it gets easier and easier to um, develop uh, more at least a more critical mind and to recognize techniques because they are techniques used in a malicious way uh, so first of all to have clear this is something it can happen and then to study how it can uh, happen and then this is the most critical thing to ask to at least try and be open to other perspectives because uh, there are what are called um, eco chambers and so on. So they are saying, you know, online it's about algorithms and then you are just seeing your own in reality. In my opinion, uh, this is happening offline also. You, you always get by with the same kind of people in the same kind of places this is not new you know uh, it's just maybe stronger and wider but this is not new so this is the most difficult thing to ask i think because it's something you know very deep inside how people yeah. are so People were, it, yeah. it was difficult even before, you know. Social <laughs> so media, just, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Mm. But do you think social media is, is um, because I think there are, okay, so we discussed also in the previous uh, episode, you, when we interviewed you previously, uh, we talked about freedom of expression and how social media manages that. So as we know, um, Facebook, yes, Twitter, and so on. They have some sort of baseline rules about certain things that can be said or not said or done. But my question now would be more related to, uh, because you showed some slides about Trump and, and Biden, but do you think that social media is helping there in making sure that these, this kind of communication about sustainability is performed by policymakers or industries in the best way possible? Or they should be improved. Mm, there's always space to, you know, improve things. And I think there's a lot to do because it's a very gray area still, it's so new. I mean, when I graduated, there was no Facebook, you know, it's not that old, but that, that's to say. Facebook is actually quite new if you consider how it, yeah. it, it grew really fast, yes. Uh, and as any other new territory to explore, any other gray area in the past, 
mm, rules are yet to come, you know? They, when, when something is new and virgin. But do you think like Facebook is evolving in the right way? I don't know if in the right way, but it's evolving. Yes. Uh, and I, I, I think some st steps in the right direction are being made. Uh, I also think there's a lot more to, to do, but this is the reality we get. So this is not something you can undo. <laughs> so in some way, you, you, you have to relate with the, the, the problem, if we can call it a problem. But um, you can just ignore it or just say, no, this is bad, so I'm... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because the reason why um, I was thinking about this was because um, I was also wondering um, mostly about the bridge between... Uh, scientists also, or even policymakers who are wanting to do some sort of their form of activism uh, on social media. So because offline, it's hard to speak with someone else, especially if they're known or so on. Uh, and you do point out a positive thing that social media brings people together, this in a positive way. But how, how is social media helping the bridge between policymakers, industries, activists, and people who should uh, uh, simply, maybe not that they're not interested, it's just not their priority, but could do something themselves as well about the climate. Mm, I think again, um, in one way, uh, social media should be considered as, as what it basically is, just, another tool uh, just another tool so it's easier to get wherever you want you to to, to get mm, in from a more uh, academic perspective every time a new technology um, gets a lot of attention and criticism usually they go you know, sideways, <laughs> attention and criticism. Um, from a more academic standpoint, the guy who always uh, came out is um, Marshall McLuhan, uh, the famous communication theorist. And maybe it, it will be a little naive to read to this reality um, with his eyes, uh, but in the 60s, so 50 years ago, he was basically recognizing what, what's happening, the global village and so on. And he came up with this beautiful, famous concept, uh, the medium is the message. Uh, and it was the 60s, so uh, media was, were not what we think they are today, so just mass media and social media, but any new technology. Um, the medium is the message, meaning um, it's not about the message they are carrying, just existing, even if it don't carry a, mex a, a message, uh, for instance, the clock or, or a, well, printed press was carrying a message, but um, lightning bulb, overnight, a new technology is changing our reality and our way of thinking about our own reality. Um, so I think the, the, these are the two, it's, a, it's polarized and these are the two things to consider. Well, it's just two, another tool, and well, our reality is, is different just because this new tool is. is yeah. So yeah, it's a difficult question to, 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 to answer, but I think to find your, uh, to find the answer, we shall start from these kind of considerations. Which sort of makes me wonder that there is also no right answer because otherwise we would have to state that there is no right or wrong because we cannot figure out what's right or wrong. I mean, you read a tweet, you go search for it, but then you sort of have to wonder, okay, there's an article someone wrote about it, but who is this person? Why did they write about it? Are they funded by someone who could be gaining profit out of this article that came out? Is the information true? Then if, 
if it, I cannot figure out by the article if the information is true, then I'm sort of forced to read research papers. Do I have the time and energy to read research papers? Do I have also the background? Do I have the will? I, I do, I do you, you do point out a really good uh, point because it is quite a big issue now in my belief that um, even, even what we're doing now is a sort of spreading awareness, however it has its limitation. First of all, the conversation, yes, people can write comments, but it's only, you know, between the two of us. And um, yes, indeed. So I think it could be a collective and you do send also another call to action message. Make sure you know what you're reading or how you're reading it, how it affects you when you're online. Indeed. So uh, maybe the next question could be about Clubhouse. So we talked about Clubhouse before we went live. And I think it's, it is become the new cool thing now. Because Clubhouse, for those who are listening and don't know, it's an app reserved for um, iPhone, so for uh, iOS, Apple, and it's only on invitation only. It's an app where you can contact people as like sort of WhatsApp, but also radio, because you can have groups where you just listen. So what, what are we, when it comes to activism, so there are so many groups now in there about uh, the environment, about climate communication as well. And I even found a flat earth uh, room there. And I thought it was amazing to hear uh, about it. So, but Umberto, what are we looking at? What do you think will be the future of Clubhouse and activism with Clubhouse as a new technology? Mm. Um, um, well, to be a bit cynical, <laughs> First of all, it's a new business territory to, to explore because uh, audio, social media is the only, uh, you know, the only um, sense we, we didn't explore uh, yet. So we have visuals uh, and we have uh, um, chats and we have anything, but not just um, in audio. Uh, social media is something new so first thing to consider <laughs> uh, but from a communication perspective it's not something new because you know as you as you mentioned <laughs> uh, the radio is something we know uh, pretty well uh, and it just blended with some other form of uh, uh, social media like yeah like it's as you as you said it's quite the mix between <laughs> radio and, and WhatsApp uh, and then uh, um, just the future of Clubhouse I don't I don't know I think it's the for sure the new trend we're seeing um, something else about Clubhouse and about audio um, socials in uh, in general uh, but you never can tell because um we, we we have seen in the past uh new you know new trends very fast <laughs> disappearing so yeah i don't i don't really know but uh it's something interesting and uh we, we should pay attention to to what's happening because yeah. it, it could be also i don't i don't say the new facebook it's very difficult to happen but maybe yeah. <laughs> Mostly, uh, mostly I've, I sort of was noticing that it seems like it's also a bit of one way. Social media in general tends to be a two way sometimes. I mean, there's a tweet, I can respond, I can like, I can flag, I can report, all of that. Uh, it's not necessarily immediate action, but there is sort of a two way, hopefully, um, in which we can interact. With Clubhouse, unless, unless you moderator make me a speaker, I cannot get involved in it. And I'm only a mere listener. Like people now with live on Facebook, the one we're doing now, they're mere listeners. They can again comment, but it's not necessarily as immediate action. So yeah, that's the reason why I was wondering because it's, it's, I wouldn't think it's as active. You cannot be as activist. So maybe this also brings to my next question when it comes to the, actually the conversation. So not only the way we converse on social media, but actually how the way we actually text or share is impacted by the fact that it's on a tweet, 140 characters only, so on. So what is your impression about that? How can we, how is communication impacted by the fact that it's boxed in a social media? 
Okay. Um, well, it, it depends from uh, the social media. And again, mm, I don't think uh, we should mm, look at each media, not just social, and each media as a, you know, just one thing. We have to consider the, always consider the big picture because there's a, a huge, uh, a so huge amount of different kind of media, then you, you just have to mm, communicate. The conversation in general is just partially mm, affected by the single uh, social media because you have all the, 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 the others. So mm, every social media can be good for some kind of information and bad for some other, or it can be good for um, different um, listeners to different what it, it depends from what the, you know users like more um, so um, any kind of communication process works basically the same way you have the sender a receiver a message a channel and the feedback uh, and it, it just applying that same uh, model to any different media but in the end i think what is more important is uh, um, the whole so um yeah maybe so on twitter uh you, you just can use uh, 140 uh, characters uh, but it's a specific use you uh you, uh, you use Twitter for a specific kind of um, communication, but then you have all the others to, you know, to to uh, compose your your communication your communication style. So I don't see um, um, the that the conversation is going to be boxed because you have all the other options. So. Okay, um, so maybe my next question is, because I always, I, this comes also from another uh, stream of consciousness, my own uh, thoughts of social media can be used only by a certain number of people. Not always are they used uh, correctly, but as you said, it's a tool. So of course you should know how to use it and you should understand how best to use it. And offline is also something that goes along online. But can we say that social media is also for privileged? Sort of, you're privileged, therefore you're more, more. There's more probability that you're going to be on social media and sharing what you did offline. Well, in some some way, maybe, but mm, not just social media. Um, any kind of media, I think. Uh, any kind of technology, any kind, uh, you know. Mm, the access to certain critical mm, services. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true, but not just for social media. If you think, for instance, on Facebook, I think 3 billion people is on Facebook. So I think it's a good um, uh, representation of what's happening also with any other kind of media and critical service. Yeah. And what about those who are not activists? What advice would you give them uh, when it comes to, I find uh, maybe a, a tweet or a post, Facebook post by a scientist, uh, I want to act. But then again, there are only specific conversation on social media. We can also say that. Um, you, you could tell me if this is right or wrong, but that conversations online are also very limited. Out of 50,000 conversations we can have about the climate online, there are only 40. So we're missing everything else. So do you, how, um, yeah, what advice would you give to someone who wants to act? It's not an activist per se, um, doesn't feel included as well. Like how, how best can we understand what is online aside from finding our own community? Hmm. Mm. Maybe you can tell us also your personal experience from this. Maybe a personal anecdote. Um, 
my personal anecdote is um, I was feeling lost uh, and willing to do something. Uh, so I started to be aware and, and, uh, and I found what I was searching for. Uh, and that's where uh, you can uh, do a good use of um, social media. Um, any kind of communication on, online, especially in social media, uh, works with uh, in you know in the lingo. <laughs> it's called the funnel, and at the top of this funnel, you 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 have the unaware uh, audience. Uh, then becoming aware of their problem, like I did, and that's where you are starting to have your conversation, giving them what they're searching for. And what they're searching for are just the first answers. You're not talking to the people there in the same way you're talking to the people here. So I was searching, what can I do? Um, you know, different kind of uh, uh, actions. I could perform a different kind of organization. I could join. And this is how I, I found out uh, about, for, for instance, uh, climate reality project and the uh, possibility to go and get uh, my uh, training uh, offline at the time, but I found it online. <laughs> so it works, <laughs> you know, uh, in good ways also. Um, and then, so yes, my experience uh, was to, 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 fe to feel lost and then to find what I was searching for and then starting to act. But um, one thing I, I discovered about during my training, it was the 3% uh, rule. Uh, we feel frustrated because we can convince everybody of <laughs> what we believe in, but that's not what we have to do. Uh, it's that 3% of um, uncertain people you can and you have to uh, convince to uh, come with you, you know, uh, because research show uh, it's enough to make a big social change. So if you can move that three uncertain uh, percent of people, then you can achieve the results you're searching for. You don't have to convince anybody. You just need that 3%. And that was very interesting. <laughs> so. Okay. So um, I think it's very important what you're saying because often uh, social media seems to be used as you enforce it because that's the only tool you could use to speak from someone uh, on the other side of the planet. As in, I will share a thousand times. Hopefully someone will listen to me. So it's very good that you say because we shouldn't be doing that. Um, so my next question is something we touched upon, again, in the interview you had with us previously. Um, just a little uh, disclaimer, I know there is no right or wrong answer, and to those listening, it is such a wide topic that uh, this is, again, what I would like to hear is just your personal opinion. And what I wanted to talk about is freedom of expression. So you already mentioned it, and it is a big topic. So you were saying, of course, someone is aware, someone is not aware. But where do you draw the line? Where should we? Yes, we are own uh, gatekeepers. But how is social media playing a role in this? Because I think it was previously said in another interview that those who, let's just say the um, govern, those who decide, like the big companies as well, it could be Facebook from above implying rules, um, should also help avoid concerns online so of course fake news and so on but for all the rest that cannot be controlled because we are free to express our own opinions what can we say about that especially when it comes about the climate like specifically when it comes to sustainability topics where do you draw the line and and how can we how can we best handle that so <laughs> yeah of course it's a very Massive, huge, yes, massive, uh, <laughs> and yes, that's my personal opinion. Um, social media have a huge responsibility, but they are still private companies with their own rule, 
you agree on when you enter their territory. So if you break the rules, <laughs> you can you have to pay the consequences. Then, uh, in some other way, um, and again, my personal opinion, I agree on you know freedom of speech and any kind of freedom in general with the popper paradox, <laughs> uh, the, the the paradox of the intolerant. There's no perfect freedom because intolerance can use that same freedom and turn it against tolerant people so there has to be some kind of limit in i don't i don't think there's i don't think perfect freedom can exist i don't think for for, for this reason i agree with us. it's something philosophical but popper was a philosopher so yes we are talking philosophy um, I think freedom has to have some kind of limitation. I don't know who has to be responsible for that kind of limitation, but perfect freedom doesn't exist. My opinion. <laughs> but that's, that's a very good point you make because freedom of, of speech, it is a really massive topic on social media. Like, how do you stop something? Maybe it's just a comment. Maybe it was not meant in a bad way. You don't know who's behind the comment itself. Uh, you can ignore as well. One, one thing I also uh, usually think is that you can move on and ignore. However, I really like the fact that you, you talked about realities before because a negative comment can impact our own vision of something. Someone comments negatively about, our, about something about the climate, about activism, and it sort of might make me feel different about the argument itself. It might stop me from being, um, from being, I don't know, active offline, just because it doesn't really represent me. All right, maybe this can be, um, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm laughing because one of the comments is John again. Hi, John. So John, he's going to be our guest this Sunday. He's watching our every live, so I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But he, he commented saying, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. So I yeah. thought that's... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, but but it, could be, it could be fun to try. <laughs> it could be fun to try, see people go crazy for a moment. When we're um, going to see a crowded theater again, yes, we can try. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. It does make a, it does send the right message. So for the last question, um, I would like to touch upon what's called climate anxiety. So in your uh, impression of how people are using social media, when it comes to the very basic, of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, in your impression, do you think it's helping this sort of sense that we are not doing much sort of onto us? Mm -hmm. um, I suffer of <laughs> climate anxiety, so yeah, of course, when you are um, uh, exposed to more data, uh, of course, the, the, the truth, it's, it's clearer, so um, I, I, I get, you, you, you can get anxious about it. Uh, and, and I think that's why one of the reasons, because some other people prefer a, 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 an easier truth, an easier reality, maybe a completely, you know, <laughs> fake um, fantasy one, but you feel more comfortable, it's easier and, uh, and everything is so clear and, and, and safe. So uh, it, it, it's more difficult and yeah. I, uh, Could you say then based on this that social media is actually stopping us sometimes from being act active offline because it allows us to make our own little world. We don't really think about the truth because it is a big topic and it can make us more anxious. Then is it could be sometimes for some people be limiting their action offline? Uh, I don't know if social media, I'm thinking about the these these times uh, 
social media or not, um, we have access to a lot more uh, information. That's the real problem, um, social media or not. Um, again, that's an issue we discussed about these uh, overwhelming amount of uh, information we are exposed to. But again, we always have to consider the other side uh, to get to a lot more information. It can be also something good to know more about what you care about. It can be also something good. Uh, it gets more difficult to manage. And again, uh, always turn on, you know, <laughs> your mind and be aware of what you're doing and what can happen and it's this is life in general it gets harder when <laughs> what's at stake it's more important so that, that's normal and you can run away or you can you know face yeah. mm -hmm. the, the problem it's more difficult but <laughs> it's more it's better in the end yeah so I guess that we can we can make the the ending part because we are nearly close to the end. So I think we can uh, wrap it up uh, unless you have other comments, Umberto, for our listeners. Mm, I'm okay. If there are, uh, I don't know, any question. I'm... I uh, there aren't any questions. So thank you for those who listened. It okay, was a pleasure you. having you on board with us, Umberto. Thank you, Asia, for the opportunity.